Today we're going to configure multiple webcams to use on a single instance of Octoprint. I've had some questions on how you could use multiple webcams on a single Octoprint instance so that you can view multiple angles of your 3D printer. Now there is a plugin out there available called Multicam by a man named Michael Morris, but for most users it's going to take just a little bit more effort to get that plugin to work as you expected. Now in this tutorial there's going to be a lot of different Linux commands and files that we have to configure, but I'm going to do my best to document all that so that you can just copy and paste most of this stuff. And as with any Raspberry Pi project, power is important, so make sure you have the correct adapter for your Pi, and if you're having issues using multiple webcams, you might want to consider using a powered USB hub. But with all that said, let's get to the computer and get this whole thing configured. So here's the web page for the Multicam plugin. This pretty much just enables you to have a couple of buttons in your control tab, and you can select a URL for each one of those buttons that you want to use. It is a nice interface, but we do need to configure a few more things to get our multicams to work. So we'll head to our Octoprint instance, we'll log in, head into settings, we'll go to plugin manager, get more, we'll search for multicam, and we'll hit install. Install is complete, we'll restart now. When the reboot's successful, we'll reload now. If you head to the control tab, you'll see you have buttons for different webcams. There's only one right now because we haven't configured it. If you head back to settings, scroll all the way to the bottom here, and you have a multicam option. And this is where you can add your additional cameras. The problem is, if you plug in multiple cameras to your Octoprint instance, it's just going to use the first one, the video zero option. It's not going to do anything with that second camera because it already has one. Also, you can't change this URL to something different by default you have to actually get in and edit the config files. By the way, this might say webcam1, but it might also say default, but we'll correct all that. By the way, I'm going to be using a Logitech C270 webcam and a C170 webcam, and that's because the C270 has a serial number option, and that allows you to tell multiple cameras apart, but the C170 doesn't. So I want to be able to show you the dev path attribute and how you can use that to help with that situation. So back to the computer. So let's SSH in the Raspberry Pi, we'll open PuTTY, I'll use the IP, default username is Pi, default password is Raspberry. So the first thing I want to do is change those default settings. You saw how they were grayed out in the GUI, you have to edit those in the config file. So we'll change directory to .octoprint, we'll list everything in the directory, and we want to edit that config.yaml file. So sudo nano config.yaml. Enter your root password, which is also Raspberry. And since we installed that plugin, you should now have a multicam entry in your config file. This is where you can edit the defaults. So webcam1, the name is fine, but this URL isn't going to work if we're supporting multiple streams. So to correct the default entry, all we really need to do is add the IP of the Raspberry Pi, so you're going directly to that entry for this stream. And that way we can do multiple streams on different ports. So here, we're just going to add HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, and then the IP of your Pi. And that should be good enough for now. So we can control X to exit, hit yes, and then enter to save. So the default entry is corrected. We will have to reboot to bring that in, but we've got a lot of other changes we need to make, so we'll hold off on that for a little bit. So now we need to know a little bit of information about our webcams, and the easiest way to do this is to get it from the messages file. So I recommend you do a tail dash f, capital F, slash var, slash log, slash messages. This is going to actively monitor the messages log. Now plug in your first webcam to whatever USB port you'd like. I'm going to plug in the C270 first. When you plug that in, it's going to give you all the information you need about that webcam. So we need the vendor ID, the product ID, and the serial number if it has one. So either write all that down, or if you're not going to close your terminal window, we can scroll back and grab it. So that's the first camera. Now let's plug in the C170. Now there's the information for the C170. Again, ID vendor and ID product, we're going to have to have that. But the C170 doesn't have a serial number. So we'll talk more about that in a minute. You can also see now in messages that it's trying to start the MJPEG streamer. That's what supports the webcam. So it grabbed the first default webcam, but it's not going to know anything about that second one. But that's fine, we'll worry about that later as well. So now that we have the info we need, you can control C to end this tail. 
Now just have a look at what devices are currently connected to your Raspberry Pi. Do an ls slash dev. You can see currently you have two video devices, 0 and 1. That streamer is only going to try to use 0. So the first thing I like to do is rename those video devices into something that we know about. So we're going to change directory into etc udev rules and we're going to create a file called 99-usb.rules. This is where you can set the attributes of our USB devices. So video subsystems are going to be video for Linux subsystems. These are all the attributes that you can add for your cameras. I grabbed these entries from a different config file, but we're going to edit these to fit our needs. So first off, we're going to take the serial number off of one of them, because the C170 doesn't have a serial number. And I'm also going to change the sim link names. Now, I recommend you use something like left and right or the printer name one or two. For this tutorial, we're going to be looking at some benchies, an orange one and a green one. So the C170 is on the orange one, so we'll call this video orange. And the 270 is on a green one. We'll call this video green. Now, even though you're in nano, you can still scroll backwards. So we can just scroll up and grab that info that we needed. So this is the first 270 camera. The vendor ID is 46D and the ID product is 825. So we're good there. And now we need the serial number for that camera. And that serial is right here. So using the attributes serial all lowercase, we can paste in our serial number. Now onto the 170 that doesn't have a serial number. So here's our info for our 170. It's 46D82B. So let's correct that. And then since we don't have a serial number, we can use a dev path attribute. So we'll do ATTRS, curly bracket, dev path, curly bracket, equals, equals, and then in quotes, you can put the dev path that you plugged it in. Now this is going to change if you move that plug around. So you always want to keep these in the same ports if you want them to be the same. And when we plug that one in, it was in port 1.2. So we'll make that dev path 1.2. And remember to put a comma after each one of your attributes. So now that we have it configured and both cams plug in, when we reboot, we're going to see the devices be called video green and video orange. Make sure all of this is correct or it won't work. So let's go ahead and hit Control X. We'll hit Y and enter to save. And let's reboot. sudo reboot now. Once the reboot's complete, we'll restart the session. And now if you do a list on your devices, ls slash dev, you can see video green and video orange. That's exactly what we want. So we've got both devices named correctly, but now we need another webcam instance to run to support that camera. So let's change directory into root bin. We'll do a list here. You can see the webcam D file. That's the default configuration. Let's save that default into something just in case we mess up. So let's copy webcam D into webcam D dot old. Have to use sudo. And we're also going to copy webcam D into webcam D2. That will support our second camera. So now that we have a backup saved, let's edit that webcam D file. sudo nano webcam D. And these are all the default options. But we need to add our device name. So we need to do dash D forward slash dev. And then forward slash the video name. So we went with video green. This is going to use our C270 for the first webcam. For most cameras, this can stay default, but you might have to change them up depending on what camera you use. Or if you want to go to a higher resolution, you can change that here. And then down on HTTP options, we can get rid of dash N, and we want to put a dash P for port, and the first one is going to be on port 8080. And in the newer versions of Octoprint, they've changed these up just a little bit so that they auto-find those cameras, and you have to disable that to get that to work. So if you scroll down to somewhere around line 83, you can find what line you're on with Control c and Nano, by the way. It's going to be under the Add Video Device Options. You want to comment out options, and in Shell, you can just do a number sign to comment out. And then right above or below this line, you want to do Options, Equals, and in quotes, Dollar Options. That will keep it from forcing a device name, and it should allow this config to work. So we can control X, Y to save, and hit enter. Now we're going to do the same thing to the webcam 2 entry. So this is our orange cam, our C170. So dash D slash dev slash video orange. Get rid of the dash in, dash P, 
and that one's going to be on port 8081. Again, we have to go down to line 83, comment out this line, and add options equals, in quotes, dollar options. Control X, Y to save, hit enter. Now we want to direct these two different instances to a log file just in case there's issues. So we want to separate them out into two log files. So we'll change directory to etc defaults. We'll have a look. We want to copy this webcam D into webcam D2. This is what configures the log. And let's edit webcam D2. sudo nano webcam D2. And then daemon will be webcam D2 for the second cam. And we want it to go to webcam D2.log file. Easy enough. Control X, Y to save it, hit enter. Now we need to add a webcam D2 file so that it starts it up when the Pi reboots. So we'll change directory into etc init.d. Again, we'll copy webcam D into webcam D2. We'll edit webcam D2, sudo nano webcam D2. And we just need to add a 2 to 7 of these entries. So here, we'll add a 2. Short description, we'll add a 2. Description, we'll add a 2. Name, add a 2. Daemon, add a 2. Package name, 2. And then log name, 2. Control X, Y to save, hit enter. Now we need to reload the daemons. You can just copy and paste this command from my cheat sheet. We need to update the init defaults so it'll restart that instance. Again, you can copy and paste this command for webcam D2. And now we can go ahead and start that webcam. We're just going to start it from etc init.d webcam d2 start. And to make sure the service is working correctly, you can do a status on it. And as long as it says active and running and there's no errors down here, everything should be good. This looks correct. Now we're almost there. So we've named the cameras different things and we've got it configured and both cameras are started and running. But now we need a web entry that we can enter into the GUI so that you can access each one of these on a different port. So that's the part we're going to do now. So we're going to edit the haproxy.config file. So we're going to change directory into etc haproxy. Let's make a copy or a backup of the current config file. So we'll sudo cp haproxy.config to haproxy.config.old. Now we can edit the haproxy config file. sudo nano haproxy. We need to add a front end entry for the new cam. So just right underneath the existing back end. We'll copy this line, we'll paste it, and change backend name to webcam2 and path to webcam2. By the way, to copy and paste in PuTTY, all you have to do is highlight, and to paste it, you right click. And now we need to add that new backend entry. So down here at the bottom, you can just copy this whole webcam backend entry, paste it, we'll rename it to webcam2, We'll rename this entry to webcam2 because that's where it's going to find it in the structure. The server name can stay webcam1. That's fine. But you need to change the port number to 8081. That's what we set it to in the webcam config file. Now you can control X, Y to save, and hit enter. Now we can reboot, and when it comes up, everything should be configured. When the Pi is done rebooting, we can head back over to the GUI. Let's reload now. Your default web stream should start right away. And if I focused it correctly, you could see your green benchy. And that's what we're going to call webcam1. But we need to add webcam2. We can do that in the GUI. So we just hit settings, go down to multicam. You can see that we updated that default entry, so now it says the correct URL. We're just going to add a second one. We'll call it webcam2. And we need to do the IP address of your Pi, forward slash webcam2, forward slash question mark action equals stream and we'll hit save on the control tab now you should be able to go from webcam 1 to webcam 2 1 2 and as a side tip if you're using time lapse just go into settings go into webcam time lapse and you can set whatever camera you'd like to use for the time lapse by default it's going to use the 8080 camera but if you want to switch to the other camera that you've added just change this one to the port that you set it to in my case it'd be 8081 you can hit test, and there's the orange cam. And there it is. Now, I know this wasn't all that easy, but hopefully with my notes, you can get it done pretty easily. And as always, if you have questions, just leave me a comment below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.